I'm the last of this session, so I would like to thank uh, not only the organizers and Gabriele for inviting me here, but also for the numerous people that are following uh, uh, this uh, talk uh, at the end of the week. OK, so um, uh, I've been asked to speak uh, about uh, uh, nonlinear microscopy. I have been doing both a pump probe, a transient absorption microscopy in my career, but recently more on the coherent Raman side, which requires always uh, uh, ultra short pulses, but with a different uh, uh, flavor. And so as uh, uh, it has already been uh, shown uh, by other people, uh, uh, transient absorption microscopy, I decided to focus more on this uh, other technique, which could be complementary to the others, uh, which is coherent Raman microscopy. So. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge, uh, oops, sorry. I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, all the people that are involved in this uh, research, uh, the active and the past team members. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, without them, uh, nothing, uh, almost nothing of what you see could, could have been uh, possible. So uh, I have these uh, first uh, slides about fluorescence microscopy, but probably I don't need to introduce fluorescence microscopy because uh, we have been uh, uh, following uh, this uh, technique and, and all the uh, super resolution uh, stead and other techniques of fluorescence uh, during the first part of this uh, uh, of this uh, workshop. Um, you have a fluorescent dyes, uh, you have uh, uh, all the possible palette of colors that you can uh, use. Uh, uh, here you see a, a series of uh, uh, absorption and emission lines of different uh, dyes. Uh, you have uh, fluorescent proteins uh, uh, in, in the blue, uh, green, yellow regions that are very good. And uh, you, can, uh, you can in this way localize uh, many different uh, components uh, of biological samples, as in this uh, publication. Uh, but uh, which is the problem? The problem is that there's not always uh, the case, but many times uh, um, fluorescent markers can hardly be added to, to the biological tissues or, or, or the cells, or sometimes uh, they give a strong perturbation because sometimes they are uh, too big. And so the uh, original biological function of the cell or of the tissue can be perturbed. And so what you are observing is maybe not the real biological process of interest. And then uh, sometimes there is a problem of phototoxicity, especially when you use a short wavelength uh, excitation or the production of reactive chemical species like uh, reactive oxygen species that can uh, uh, generate uh, uh, problems because they can, for example, oxidate the, the sample. And so uh, sometimes you need some kind of intrinsic label-free imaging methods. Of course, you could, you could use uh, intrinsic fluorescence uh, when, uh, when the sample has a strong enough signal, but sometimes uh, you cannot use intrinsic uh, fluorophores, so you have to go into a different uh, domain and we have been uh, listening uh, uh, this afternoon about many possible approaches, for example, pump probe, and uh, another possible approach is, um, is coherent Raman scattering. So let me just start briefly. I, I, will, I will do a, 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 um, a presentation which is uh, uh, quite uh, introductory to the, to the topic because I have been uh, talking with Gabriele and understood that we have several uh, PhD students uh, or, or young postdocs, and so maybe it's good to introduce the technique uh, to the non-experts. So I will not uh, much speak about our results, but mainly uh, about what is possible uh, with this technique. So uh, spontaneous Raman is a well-known technique. Uh, we we uh, we have a. Uh, uh, we've been you're working with it uh, since uh, 50 years. Uh, we have the Nobel Prize uh, Raman uh, many years ago. So uh, any biological tissue, any, any specimen, uh, tissue or cell, displays uh, a kind of characteristic uh, uh, fingerprint, uh, a kind of chemical signature that, that we can use for uniquely identifying it. And this is the vibrational spectrum. So what you see here is a typical vibrational spectrum of a sample in which you have the low frequency region, which is called the fingerprint region because you have these very distinctive uh, um, uh, narrow uh, lines. And then you have the high frequency region, which is the H, the, the CH stretching region typically, where you have the hydrogen, which is very light, and so it will oscillate at very high frequency. And this can be uh, used without any staining, without any labeling, labeling because you, you, you directly um, focus on the vibration of the molecules of interest. 
Now, uh, you have different uh, uh, frequencies, a different uh, uh, omega-1, omega-2, omega-3, and each of these uh, frequency is associated in, in an energy graph to a certain vibration. Here, for example, I see a carbon and hydrogen uh, bond. And so the frequency will, will, of course, depend on the weight of the two masses. Of course, if the weight is large, the frequency will be lower. And on the spring, here you see a spring. The spring is, is the chemical bond. So you, if you have a single, double or triple bond, of course, you, you will change from low frequency to high frequency because the triple bond will be stiffer, of course. And also the environment, of course, because if you change the environment in which the oscillation occurs, then you also change the frequency of interest. And so you have a, a, a localized probe uh, that you can use for a kind of a remote chemical analysis of the sample. And typically, the spontaneous Raman occurs in this way. You have a monochromatic pump laser, CW, and you monitor at the uh, inelastically scattered uh, photons, which are red-shifted, which we call Stokes photons. This is a typical Raman response of a cell in which you see, again, the very dense um, uh, fingerprint region in which you have many peaks overlapping and then the quite broad features around the CH stretching and then you have also water. And then you see that the, 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 the challenge is to detect this fingerprint so you need broad spectral coverage and you need also high sensitivity because you see that uh, it's quite lower in intensity with respect to the high frequency region which is uh, less informative. Here is an example already uh, old now, it's five years ago. This is a, a brain of a human patient. Here you see a needle entry, entering into the brain uh, and reaching the, a tumor. And then you see at the end of the optical fiber, let me take my uh, fake laser pointer. Okay, here it is. At the end of the fiber, you have uh, some red light uh, exciting the molecules, and then the red shifted vibration will be collected uh, through these uh, uh, set of filters, and there is a bundle of fibers outside the inner one, and then this is sent to a spectrometer, and what you detect is this. Here you see a very tiny change between the red and the black curve. The black curve is the normal brain tissue, while the red one is the tumor. It seems that there are no differences, but this is uh, uh, actually uh, the differences are above the signal to noise ratio, so there, there are true differences. And by detecting these tiny changes, you can detect, for example, and distinguish normal brain tissue and tumor tissues with the sensitivity and specificity, which we see here uh, around 93 and 91%, which is much higher than the standard clinical practice, which is uh, h &E staining, which is uh, coloring the tissues with uh, some dyes and observing under a microscope by a visual inspection of a pathologist. The problem is that this is quite, quite slow. Here, th there is a, a long list of possible assignment of these peaks. Uh, you see, this is one page, uh, another page, and the third page, and the fourth page. So there are a lot of possible chemical bonds. Of course, uh, it's very difficult to really assign the pathology to the uh, chemical bond itself. What we do typically is a black box uh, analysis in which uh, we uh, simply uh, try to distinguish, uh, to categorize the normal and the tumor tissue by the uh, average spectrum. This has been uh, demonstrated not only in the human brain, but also in other organs with very high specificity and sensitivity. Now, this is spontaneous Raman. Uh, uh, the problem is that spontaneous Raman is very slow. Uh, it can take uh, maybe a, a second to detect one of these spectra at a single spot on the sample. So if you need to make such an image like this one and to correlate this image to the H&E staining, uh, which is a standard practice, uh, it will take forever. So if a high, high um, um, resolution image of maybe a thousand by a thousand pixels means a million pixels, it would require a million time, uh, one second of integration time. So you cannot, of course, uh, uh, think of uh, asking the patient to stay still for a million seconds just to get an image. So in order to go from spontaneous Raman, which is typically used only as a point analysis to an image-like analysis, you need to go faster than this. So you see here, spontaneous Raman is very high in information contact, but very low in imaging speed. 
So how, how to improve the speed is to go from spontaneous to coherent Raman. So this is a sketch I typically use to explain to my students the difference from spontaneous to coherent Raman. In spontaneous Raman, you have a CW pump, so a continuous wave pump. This is the uh, beam waste of the sample. And here you probe random thermal vibrations. For example, you want to probe the oscillation of this uh, molecule A and B, okay? And you see they all oscillate out of phase one from each other at a certain frequency, say omega. Now in coherent Raman, of course, uh, it's more complicated because you need uh, not one, but two lasers and the two lasers should be pulsed. So you need the uh, picosecond or femtosecond pulsed lasers. One is called the pump, the other is called the stokes. And uh, in the focal spot and only in the focal spot, uh, what you see is that you induce coherent 3D oscillation. You see that it's not anymore random, but it's coherent in the sense that the two beams uh, will have a frequency difference which matches this oscillation omega. You see uh, capital omega is omega pump minus omega stokes. And so you, you kind of take the molecule, you shake it, and then if the molecule vibrates at this frequency, it enters into resonance. And so you see that it will indeed gives you it will indeed give you a signal. So you have a coherent uh, oscillation, and this will enhance uh, the signal by many orders of magnitude, five, six orders of magnitude, which means that you can sp speed up the process. And you can have from seconds to microsecond uh, in integration time per pixel. And moreover, as it's uh, a nonlinear technique, uh, you only get signal from the focus, and so you have three-dimensional imaging capabilities. Now, the problem in, in coherent trauma is that typically if there is another molecule oscillating at different frequency, say omega prime here, this yellow CAC molecule, normally it's, it's possible to detect it at, at a different frequency omega prime. For coherent trauma, at least in the standard implementation, this is a typically single frequency uh, um, uh, modality. So the other frequency will not oscillate because it will not fulfill this uh, resonance uh, condition. So the problem is that uh, you have to go to broadband. So let's see, coherent Raman uh, is typically done in two different uh, uh, modalities. One is called SRS, which stands for Stimulated Raman Scattering, which uh, uh, entails uh, a, 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 a transition through a, a virtual state in which you uh, have an annihilation of a pump photon and, and the generation of a Stokes photon. So as you see here, the output pulse will be uh, so you, you need at the input two picosecond narrowband pulses, and at the output, the pump stock, the pump pulse is depleted. You get simulated Raman loss, and the Stokes pump uh, pulse is uh, um, amplified, and you get the simulated Raman gain. But pay attention that this gain and loss are very very small. Typically, 10 to the minus four, 10 to the minus five, even 10 to the minus six. So uh, it's very hard to detect it. You need the typically uh, locking detection techniques. The cars uh, will have a, a different uh, pulse interaction scheme. And what you see is uh, that you will monitor the generation of the uh, so-called anti-stokes uh, photons. And uh, it technically is easier because uh, you just need to count photons. You just uh, uh, filter out the pump and the stokes and you count the photons of the anti-stokes. The problem is that cars uh, will uh, also uh, have spurious signals, which signals which are called non-resonant background, which will distort your, your signal of interest. So it is technically more simple, but uh, it is also uh, less uh, easy to extract uh, minimal, minim meaningful information. So coherent trauma in the standard implementation is very high in imaging speed, as I said, but low in information content because uh, you have only uh, one frequency at a time. But you can do marvelous things. Uh, here I'm reporting some uh, some results, uh, uh, for example, in uh, cell imaging, where where you can, for example, uh, image DNA, proteins, and lipids without any staining nor labeling. So it's uh, it's a label-free intrinsic uh, oscillation of the of the cells. You can see here, for example, doing uh, um, here it's uh, one one frame every two minutes. Uh, you can um, uh, see a, a cell. Um, uh, mitosis. Let me see if I can uh, let it run a second time. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. Well, maybe you saw it. You, 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 can, you can image brain tumors. For example, this is a very large image in which you, you can see, for example, a normal mouse brain uh, like this, and then uh, a different uh, infiltration of, of uh, a, 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 a 
glioblastoma xenograft into into a, a, the brain of the of the of the mouse. Here, for example, you have a minimal uh, infiltration. Here, you can have a, a very large infiltration. Here and uh, and so you can you can really follow the the infiltration of the tumor inside the brain. Uh, without any staining. So on the right hand side, you have the standard clinical practice, which is staining with dyes, but this is uh, this cannot be applied in vivo, of course. And on the left, uh, you have stimulated Raman scattering uh, imaging. In this case, it's not at one color, but at two colors. You see the, this blue and, and green, and you can get exactly the same information. Now, how can you go from single frequency to multi-frequency? Well, a, a first idea would be to tune one of the two colors. For example, if you tune the Stokes, uh, color, you change the omega frequency difference, and so you change, of course, the, uh, the, the you, can, you can scan across the signal. But then what you can do better than this is to monitor in parallel all the vibrational signatures using not the two picosecond pulses, but one picosecond pulse, which is the pump, and the femtosecond broadband stokes, which will cover at the same time different uh, signatures. Now, the problem is that here again, how to collect this spectrum, because this spectrum is very, uh, I mean, the, the signal, these uh, peaks uh, are very small. They, the change uh, into the spectrum features are a, a portion of 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. And so you need a very fast, uh, because typically you need uh, megahertz repetition rate lasers, spectrometer, with very high accuracy in order to detect these very tiny changes. Okay, so we have proposed in the last uh, five years uh, four different techniques. Uh, I will not go through the technical details, but I can I can show you here some references. You can watch the video of this uh, webinar later on to to have a look at these uh, different techniques uh, using uh, either a photonic time stretching uh, technique in which you enter an optical fiber, you stretch the pulse so much that it will become from picosecond to nanosecond duration, so that to sample in time the frequencies because each, each color will arrive at a different time. We have recently uh, uh, constructed a, a home-built uh, multi-channel locking amplifier that we will soon hopefully also commercialize that will monitor in parallel all the colors in a, in a multi-channel fashion. We have also demonstrated a wavelength scanning uh, a spectral uh, uh, approach in which you scan by a galvanometric mirror or using a Fourier transform, a time domain approach. So instead of measuring each color in the spectral domain, we use the temporal domain by generating two replicas of the, of the light and using the Fourier transform approach si similar to the FTIR approach. So uh, the goal is to combine spontaneous and coherent trauma in order to have both high information content, which is typically of spontaneous Raman, and high imaging speed, which is typically affordable in coherent Raman. And the, and the, the future goal is then to image a sample and uh, measure a spectrum in each and every position rapidly and see, for example, where is the tumor, where is the normal tissue for a, for a real time and uh, classification of cells and tissues. So we have built, uh, I will show you just a couple of images uh, of our uh, instruments. This is a home-built microscope. This is uh, an upright uh, microscope, so the light comes uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, here is a, a zoom of the, um, of the focusing and of the collection part of the, of the um, microscope. This is a, a, a home-built inverted microscope where light comes uh, from the bottom to the top. We have galvanometric uh, uh, mirrors to scan the, the sample uh, quickly. And then we go in transmission. We have both a photomultiplier tube and, uh, and a balanced photodiode. This is a multimodal microscope. We detect uh, simultaneously two photon excited fluorescence, second harmonic generation microscopy, CARS, and SRS in the same instrument. So I will show you a few results. These are uh, unpublished results on a, on a mouse fibrosarcoma. It's a tumor model in which uh, the, the tumor is uh, injected into the mouse. And then here you see the cancer in, in red and the healthy muscle in, in blue. Now, if we rotate this uh, image and we zoom in, you can see that we can, for example, zoom into the border between the tumor and the normal tissue. And here, all these images that you see are h and &E staining images, so it's the standard clinical practice in, in which uh, you, you stain the, with two different colors that will color differently 
the, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. And here you see, for example, the cancer in the upper part. And here you can see the blood the vessels. You see the, 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 the blood the vessels here in the, the, the in, 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 in red, I would say, and the muscles here in, in the bottom. And here, as a comparison, this is the SRS, broadband stimulated Raman scattering results, in which you see the same structure. Uh, for example, if we move now to a different location, for example, here, you see again, this is the cancer and the connective tissue, and here, the results of SRS imaging. So, uh, this is the result of uh, some uh, uh, chemometric analysis. So, imagine that here, this is a hypercube, so we have X and Y image, and then for each and every position, you have the spectrum, so it's a three-dimensional um, result. And uh, then if you analyze the spectra, you see that the spectra are different. This is uh, just focusing on the high frequency um, uh, region of the CH stretching. And by uh, doing some uh, chemometrics, uh, some spectral, uh, for example, some principal component analysis, you see that you have two different spectra, the red and the green. And if you color in red and green the two components, you see that the connective tissue here is, is colored in mainly in, in green, while the cancer here in red. And so you can distinguish the two, um, the two uh, components with, uh, uh, without any labeling. So the label is done uh, virtually because you, 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 you label by the vibrations. While the H&E staining is typically uh, very long. For example, our partners here, they, they it took us, it took them three days for sample prepara preparation, and it's always subjective. The coherent trauma approach uh, tends to be objective and uh, potentially real time on fresh or frozen tissue. This is another result with uh, with uh, with another collaboration with the Humanitas uh, Research uh, Hospital, in which we see uh, a, a mouse bone. Here we are studying uh, a, a pathology re related to uh, to um, uh, to a, a, a protein which uh, um, will uh, uh, create a pathology in the in the bone, creating it uh, um, to be less uh, um, uh, resistant. And here on the right hand side, we see the multimodal image. In this case, uh, we color in green, in 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 blue, the second harmonic generation uh, uh, signal, which comes uh, especially from collagen. Collagen fibers are uh, well oriented uh, 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 along a, a certain direction, and so they give a very strong signal in second harmonic generation because second harmonic generation will probe non-centrosymmetric uh, structures. And then in green and red, we probe two different uh, um, uh, uh, transition, two different, uh, let's say, uh, vibrations. Uh, one typically of proteins and one of lipids using. Uh, um, uh, stimulated Raman scattering uh, label-free technique. So, in in in, in general, the, here you see, for example, in uh, pink uh, collagen plus lipids, in uh, pale uh, blue collagen plus proteins, or in yellow lipids pro pro plus proteins. And so you see how uh, uh, how much detail information you can get with respect to the standard practice. For example, if we zoom in into this uh, area, you see that we can we can have cellular. Um, uh, resolution with a very large millimetric size uh, uh, overall structure of the backbone of the of the mouse uh, sp spinal cord. Uh, this is another uh, uh, example in which uh, we studied in a collaboration with the, the Tumor Institute of Milan uh, the evolution of the cell morphology um, uh, induced by iron depletion. Uh, this is a, a, a cancer cell line in which uh, uh, before cell death, uh, two days after treatment, you see the generation of these kind of vacuoles, uh, and then after 78 hours, the cells are dead. You see here that, that, that uh, they are completely uh, unstructured. Before cell death, you can study this kind of generation of these vacuoles uh, with, uh, uh, with cars, in this case, uh, 48 hours after the, the treatment. And here you see that the control and treated uh, cells, uh, you see the generation of these uh, kind of uh, uh, structures. Uh, they told us that they were suspecting that they were full, full of lipids, but then in actually not. They are full of water actually of culturing medium because you can see that these vacuoles uh, these ones uh, or these ones uh, they provide exactly the same uh, result as the this blue medium this is the culturing medium of the cells uh, while the lipids uh, provide a completely different uh, response 
Okay, so um, this is another example, uh, not anymore in, in cell biology, but in, 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 in plants. This is a, um, a, a, an aquatic plant. This is the so-called Elodia uh, aquatic plant. And then we imaged, um, uh, just to show you an example of what you can do, summing up the stimulated Raman scattering uh, image with two photon excited fluorescence, in which you can localize, for example, the... Um, the, the um, the, the fluorescent uh, um, chlorophylls and, um, and, uh, and the lignin, which is typically flowing uh, uh, be be uh, between cells. I'm running out of time, so I will go just quickly. For example, you can see uh, uh, lipid droplets inside the liver cells in three dimensions, or this is a bovine uh, liver tissue. This is pollen tubes from tobacco plants. So I gave you a bit of an overview of the possibilities apply to biology of a, a label-free coherent uh, Raman uh, uh, scattering microscopy, which is a, a very fast-growing uh, field that you can use to image uh, samples and to extract quantitative information about, uh, about the sample. So with this, I would like to, to finish my, my presentation. I would like to thank you all for your attention.